Hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to Admin Collins Lodge. Um, my name is Milan, I'll be your MC for the morning shift. Uh, just so you know, make sure to wear this badge uh, across. There's a, a, we are currently at the number four, which is this one. Uh, Yost Lodge is over there. You pass by the, the smaller room and the auditorium. Lunch will be served, as Wendy said, like lunch will be served here in this area. This is the restaurant. Uh, so yeah, make sure to wear your badge. Uh, just so you know, your badge is also valid ticket to the zoo. So if you are like in between, you want to visit uh, zoo, feel free to. Uh, make sure to uh, honor the code of conduct, which basically if you are tired of like, reading the whole thing, just like be kind and be respectful to others. Uh, we are kicking off uh, at New Lodge with Jerome. Like Jerome is the tech lead. Uh, for company uh, whole green digital, right? Uh, so if you follow along the sustainability, Jerome is the guy who you should, uh, you should definitely pay visit and um, uh, check the website. I'm really looking forward to this talk. So from yak.com to yum.com. Yeah, Jerome. Thanks, Milan. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, very, very happy to be here. Thanks for making it along the very long hallway and finding this room. Um, first off, I feel like I need to clear something up. Last night when I was here at the, the dinner for the speakers and volunteers, I realized that I've, I've made a faux pas by naming this presentation words that maybe not all English speakers might understand. So for anyone who doesn't understand what yuck means and what yum means, I'm going to clear this up in the universal language of gifts. <laughs> this is yuck. That's yum. <laughs> yum. <coughs> this one's yum. <laughs> and finally, this is the Burger Zoo <coughs> edition. <laughs> That's yuck. And this one's yum. <laughs> so hopefully, everyone understands now sort of what I'm talking about. Uh, and the title will become clear in a little bit when I when I get to it. So, uh, yeah, as Milan said, I'm Jerome Tool. I'm a tech lead at uh, Whole Grain Digital, which is a, an agency in London. Um, and we work with some lovely people like this. We work with positive businesses and charities and that sort of thing. So UNICEF, ECOVA, uh, Oxfam, some of these are UK names that you probably don't recognize. Um, but we also, alongside our, our sort of normal agency work, we have a focus on website web sustainability. Um, and we built this uh, carbon calculator, which it was in 2018 was the first carbon calculator for websites. Um, and this basically, drawing from a body of research, gives you an estimate as to how much uh, carbon a single website is responsible for emitting. And the last talk by Joost was absolutely brilliant for uh, giving us a primer, um, and actually totally opened my mind as to how much uh, carbon actually comes from bots, because that's not something that we've been looking at. So, a very brief recap on website carbon emissions. Um, this background here is like a thermal image from a, from a data center. Uh, just a reminder that data centers are like huge energy guzzling machines. Um, so in general, uh, the, uh, the internet and computing uses 2.1, emits 2.1 to 3.9% of carbon emissions in the world. And that's above global aviation and the UK as a whole. Um, if it was a country, it would be the sixth largest country in terms of emissions. I think what makes this really unconscionable and unbelievable is that the internet and computing have broadly been built in a time when we've been conscious of the environment. Other industries, it's a lot harder for them to switch um, and it might be harder for them to decarbonize, but I think that the internet should be something that we're building to be net zero from the beginning. So, one most important point here is that our website carbon calculation is based on the amount of bytes transferred, um, and that's used as a sort of uh, a, a, a useful estimate and a good way of measuring, um, and you can find out more about exactly how that uh, sort of estimate is built on the website carbon.com. The happy coincidence, as Joost was saying, is that actually doing this work benefits SEO, uh, you get faster page loads, it's good for users, more conversions, and you might even get cheaper hosting. Um, so this is not something that we need to do sort of like against 
our other best wishes? Is this something that's good for business? So, how do we actually create a sustainable website? What can we do as builders of the web that will move the web in general in a better direction? I'm going to take you through the process of transforming a really, really terrible website, a website that does everything really badly and really wrong. Uh, and then step by step, we're going to bring it back into uh, being a, a healthy, uh, low-carbon website. And along the way, we'll explore some tools and methodologies which you can put into place when you build or manage your own projects. Okay, so let's meet our test subject. This is Yuck.com. Yuck.com is a fictional uh, and dubious startup. Um, they claim to be the next big thing in environmentally conscious food. Um, all the big magazines are talking about them. They've just got a big uh, A round of funding. They sound pretty cool. The truth is, they're more greenwashed than green. And while they're posing as, as an innovator in food tech, what they're actually doing is just selling people rotten food. Um, and they're just trying to make some money off that. Unsurprisingly, their eco-credentials don't stack up. Let's take a look at their website. Hopefully, I can flip across seamlessly. I've lost my cursor. Wait a second. Here we go. Right. So this is the website. This is a little sort of demo website that I built. Um, it's a fairly standard website. We've got a nice big header image. We've got a little menu here. Uh, it's got a badge. It's eco-friendly. Just trust us. Uh, classic. <laughs> menu. Um, we've got some 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 badges here from different uh, news networks. A YouTube embed explaining how their uh, innovative food and spoiling process works. Uh, and then we've got some blog posts. The surprising benefits of E. coli in the gut. And finally, some meaningless tagline, and we've got a, a form at the bottom, a gravity form at the bottom. Uh, this is actually, I'm using all the markup from a WordPress uh, sort of generated site. So it is what would be on the front end of a WordPress website, but it's actually a static GitHub pages uh, build. So these are the baseline sort of stats. Um, Speed index is kind of, as far as I understand it from HP, is kind of like the user can see the first kind of piece of, of the, the above the fold content and they're like, okay, this is the website, I'm there. So the speed index is 5.6 seconds. Uh, I'm using the mobile mode for page speed. 60% of users are on mobile, so we should probably go mobile first. Um, time to interactive is 37.9 <coughs> seconds. Um, page speed performance is really low, 38. Uh, transfer data is 11.8 megabytes, which is huge. I mean, a, a, a good website should be like nowhere above a megabyte, but probably more like 500, 600 kilobytes, just a standard website. Uh, and then down here, this, this company are lucky enough to have got some, some traffic. They've got 60K, 60,000 visit, visits in the last year, and that gives them 186.7 kilograms of CO2 emitted, which is huge. Um, now, after Yost's talk, I realized that this is probably far, far, far higher, because I'm not accounting for any bot visits here. So this is probably 600,000, maybe more. OK, so moving into phase one, where we're going to basically optimize the site. We're going to leave it exactly the same, uh, but we're just going to make it work. Uh, a bunch better behind or under the hood. So the first thing and the most the most important thing I would argue in this whole process is to switch to efficient green hosting, hosting that's powered by renewable energy. You can use the Green Web Foundation to um, to find a green host. Luckily, uh, there's a lot of big hosts like Google who have uh, renewable energy that they use to uh, power their infrastructure. Um, Alongside the, the benefit of this making your website green, which is great, and will reduce the estimated carbon emissions by about 13%, the real impact here is that you have an opportunity to vote with your pounds or euros, and as more people choose green hosting, the less responsible hosting companies will be forced to follow suit and offer that as a, as a competitive factor. 
as more data centers require renewable energy in the areas that they, they're located, that will create demand for renewable energy sources. So this is an opportunity to kind of punch above our weight and try to uh, have, a, have an impact on the whole uh, energy grid. So cloud-based architecture, generally much more efficient. Big data centers are very efficient. One dedicated server, not so efficient. Uh, think about all your third-party services. So anything that you're loading on your site, you need to be as a giraffe over there. Sorry. Uh, anything that is on your site, you need to be responsible for the, the, the energy that's going into that. And make sure you're caching. Uh, there's no point in generating a page that's the same every day, there's no point in generating it at the same time every time somebody loads it. So, this step, we've not changed anything in the transferred data, uh, but the CO2 per page view has come down, and the annual emissions have come down from 186.7 kilograms to 161. That's a 13% uh, decrease, and all we did was change host. Okay, the next step um, is about thinking about the devices that you're serving to. And uh, the average smartphone requires 55 kilograms of CO2 equivalent to manufacture. Uh, the manufacturing of a single device, including the mining of rare materials, takes as much energy as recharging and using a smartphone for 10 years. Most people replace their smartphone every two to three years. Um, so... I think that I, I kind of recently realized that this is an, something that we can actually have an impact on as web developers. I think we have a responsibility to support older devices for as long as possible to ensure that people don't feel pushed uh, into upgrading their device. You know that feeling when you start the device you're using, the smartphone you're using, like websites start to feel like they're not quite right and apps are a bit slow. If you can avoid that, then people will keep their devices for longer. So I recommend, I mean, I'm kind of thinking this out at the moment, but I'm thinking if we draw a line in the sand with the Evergreen browsers, I'm not suggesting we try and support IE 11 until the end of time. Um, and then aim to support mobile devices for a minimum of five years and desktops a minimum of 10. Um, there's no reason you couldn't go much beyond this, but I think it's a good place to start. Um, and this is not exactly the same as looking at browsers because some uh, browsers might, might basically not be updatable on a, on a certain device, and devices sometimes get left behind uh, by the manufacturers. Uh, and then we want to design for the lowest common denominator. So rather than build a really cool site and then a, a less cool version for the older device, I think we should, be, we should be keeping it to the level of the older device so that there's not so much of a benefit of, of upgrading. All right. So now into kind of like code changes and things we can actually practically do on our websites. Image optimization. Images are by far the biggest kind of asset class on websites. Um, and they're also the asset class that can balloon the most sort of dramatically. And I'll show you uh, an example on, on yuck.com. So uh, yeah, here we have like the three steps basically. You have to make sure the image is compressed. They should be using efficient new formats such as AVIF and WebP um, and SVG. And you want to be sure that your images are sized responsively to the actual size of the box that they're in on the page. So an example here in yuck.com, we'll go down to the network tab. This is basically the first thing I do whenever I'm sort of getting a website up and I want to look at the carbon. Um, I've probably got a couple of uh, extensions here kind of filling this up, so this will be a little bit more, uh, there'll be a bit more data here than, than we really need. But the first thing I do is probably go here and list by the, the biggest assets first. And we see initially we've got this, this Ecoli PMG, which is 5.8 megabytes. And I really wish that this example was kind of ridiculous and, and was totally like fictional. But, the amount of times that I've been on sites and I've seen assets that are loaded like this is, it's really horrifying. It's like, just, just compress it. Um, so we've got 5.8 megabytes, 2.3 megabytes. We've got YouTube loading in uh, 500 kilobytes of script before I even click to play. 
Um, and in our images, the image filtered by images here, you can see we've got 10.9 megabytes of images loading in. So what to do? Firstly, we want to compress. Uh, I recommend that any like theme assets, and maybe like the, the big assets on the, the like the front page assets, try to hand compress them, hand optimize them, because you'll end up with much better results. Um, Photoshop is a good good one. Squoosh.app is great, and TinyPNG you probably know. For SVGs, SVG, oh my god, is amazing. You can download it as a like a web app, um, and then you just put SVGs into it, and you can sort of hand optimize them and get them down just to the very, uh, the most optimized before they start looking bad. And then for authored content, it's unrealistic to expect content authors to always hand optimize their assets. So we need an automated tool. And I'm gonna talk about Short Pixel Adaptive Images, which is a WordPress plugin. Optimal does a very similar thing. This is SVG, oh my God, SVGO. Um, and this is the yuck.com logo. Um, the standard minification optimization only reduced the logo to seven kilobytes, whereas doing this manual process where you can basically drag this slide down, and you drag it down to zero and it, everything goes a little bit janky, and then you bring it up until it looks okay, and that got it down to two kilobytes. Okay, so formats. Uh, image formats are really complicated on the web right now because there's lots of different browsers, and they all support different formats. Um, so we do need a bit of help here. Uh, icons, shapes, and logos should be SVG. GIFs should never, never should you have an animated GIF on a website. You should have them in MP4 format. They're much smaller. Uh, and everything else should be AIF with a WebP and JPEG fallback. Um, you can use a picture tag to have like a bunch of different image formats, and then the browser will choose the one that it works with. Um, or again, you can use uh, an intelligent image CDN, short pixel, Cloudflare Polish is good, Cloudinary I've also used. Uh, and lastly, I really recommend that you enable SVG upload in WordPress. I don't know if this will ever be in core, but the safe SVG plugin is great, and it means that users can upload like logos or whatever in an SVG format. So I'm just going to install short pixel adaptive images. We do this on every single website. Uh, you do pay for credits, but it's very reasonably priced. Uh, it provides an image at the perfect size for the rendered image con container size. So it's not just the size of the screen, but actually the box that the image is sat in. Um, it crops invisible parts of images, such as you know if you have a square shape, but you, your image is wide, it'll crop those parts of the side. And it intelligently reformats the image depending on its contents and the user's browser support. So basically it has one URL for any image, and that URL is gener generated on load, and then it goes away and gets whichever format you need. These are the settings. I always choose glossy because I hate uh, the, the compressed look on images. The web should look beautiful. Um, here are the results from installing this. So this is quite massive. So down from 11.8 megabytes to 2.8 megabytes. Uh, and our annual emissions have decreased from 161 to 38 kilograms. 76.2% decrease. Can I ask you a question? Yeah? Aren't you outsourcing your CO2 uh, emissions by using the short pixel AI? Yes. Well, yeah, but that, that, that will be uh, another efficient uh, server. Um, and You assume? Assume, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I guess, uh, I actually can't remember off the top of my head whether they, what their renewable hosting is. Um, but I'd like to say that I've checked. Yeah. But I can't say for sure because I can't remember. Sure. But that's a perfect example. Yeah, that third party resource needs to have the same credentials. Um, I actually think that most likely that theirs will be a much more efficient setup than running them off the WordPress server. Yeah. But I haven't looked into it. Um, I'm gonna whiz through this. Uh, basically, responsive image sizing, you can either use something like short pixel, or you can uh, use the WordPress built-in support. Or what I've done on this site, because it's actually a static site, is I've built these, um, these short pixel URL strings, and I've put the width in here, W underscore 190, 
And then for each of those widths, um, I've used like a source set uh, widths. And this works pretty well. I've never actually done this before, but uh, it's, it's an interesting approach, and you could obviously automate this, um, make it more dynamic. Right, more stats. We'll gloss over these. I need to hurry up. Uh, but we jumped up to 61 from 41 on page three performance. And we're down to 1.65 megabytes. Lazy loading. If only half our users scroll halfway down the page, let's avoid loading those assets until they do. This happens automatically in WordPress. Right, font formats, really simple. Use WAF2, nothing else needs to be used. Um, and secondly, subset audio fonts. Font files come with thousands of glyphs for many, many languages. You only need the glyphs that you're going to use in the languages you use. This is an excellent online tool, Transfonter, um, where you just upload the fonts, it converts them into WAF2, uh, and then you can also choose which uh, subset you want to use. I don't know if you can choose multiple subsets. Um, obviously, in the UK, we're happy with the Latin subset. But if you need more advanced uh, GIF selection, you can use uh, the command line tool called GIF Hanger, which is really great. You can actually do a, a crawl of a website, get all the GIFs that are used, and then include them. So this is before. Um, and we. Is this before or is this after? Uh, I've, I've messed up. This is before. So we have uh, an inter font which is 159 kilobytes, although and overall we're at 414 kilobytes just for fonts, which is crazy. Uh, and this is after that, that one at the top, the inter semi bold, has come down to 21 kilobytes, uh, and we're down to under 100 kilobytes overall. So subsetting really, really pays off. And also, <clears throat> because font loading massively affects the, kind of, the user experience you know, while you're waiting for the fonts to load, everything looks wrong. Getting the fonts down uh, really, really helps the user experience and speed. Yeah, so now we're down 18 kilograms a year, down from like 186 or something. Um, a very Excuse basic. Me? Sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry, what was the tool that you used for fonts again? Transfonta. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, this is, a, a, this is an obvious one, I hope, but basically any file of code needs to be crushed down, take the white space out. Uh, this is the CSS file before, and that's the CSS file afterwards. It doesn't look nice to you, but it's uh, 25 kilobytes smaller. It feels like a small win, but we're going for gold here. <laughs> OK, so um, unfortunately, as, as Joost was saying earlier, um, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of cruft in WordPress, which, um, which can just be sitting there unused and it's something we'll never use. Um, so examples, block styles, you might not be using all the core blocks. Um, our kind of process internally at Holgrain is we use some of the core blocks, but we actually use our own styling for them. Um, and so we can just remove <coughs> block styles. You've also got lots of custom properties that get added into the HTML now. Um, and you may not use them. If you don't use them, you can just remove them. There's a whole load of other stuff in WordPress that you can remove from, on many, many sites. Um, and then another class of things that are unnecessary sometimes are assets loaded on pages where they're not needed. So it's very common in WordPress that you install a plugin and suddenly you have JavaScript and CSS files on every single page, even though you're only using that plugin in one view. Um, that's sometimes not easy to fix, but in other cases, it can be a lot easier. This is a really sad example uh, of something that was introduced in WordPress fairly recently. Um, and now this, uh, this array of SVG elements, uh, which are the Durotone filters for, you know, in images you can make images Durotone. This exists on every single WordPress site now. And it's only 649 bytes. But when you think about the sheer volume of WordPress and how many visits WordPress sites in general get, um, the, the carbon impact of this little block here must be quite sizable. That's yuck. <laughs> okay, so I found a few JavaScript files and CSS files. I found a whole carousel library which was loaded in but wasn't used on the home page. Very common. 
Um, and so I, I removed those, I removed the WordPress craft, and we saved 38 kilobytes. <coughs> so, um, right, so we, we're, getting, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're now kind of somewhere near normal. I would say this is still too high, 1.34 megabytes for a website, but uh, this is probably quite average. Um, I can't remember what the average is, but we're, we're getting towards average. Uh, and from the beginning, 186 kilograms. This is the end of phase one. So we've now done all the stuff that we're going to do that was invisible. It was all just under the hood. We've saved 100. We've saved, sorry, 169 kilograms of CO2 per year just by optimizing, just by doing stuff the right way. Um, and now we move on to phase two, which is where we make some small changes, some design adaptations, um, and hopefully have some big wins. So one example, which is quite common on WordPress websites, is that we have uh, gravity forms loading in. Now I think gravity forms sometimes loads in on every single page. Um, at Holgram, we have some code that removes it from pages that it's not used on. So you need to look out for that. But also, you will notice that, I type in gravity here, we've got a bunch of JavaScript and CSS loading. And also, we have jQuery loading in on every page. Um, that's actually the JSON jQuery file that there is jQuery is also loading. Um, and basically, I just don't need any of that. Um, so you've got a couple of options. You could either just use an HTML form. I recommend that. Uh, HTML forms is a great plugin that allows you to just create a very simple form. It's still kind of user editable, um, so that's one option. And you also get the, the response comes into your WordPress dashboard. Uh, but if your form requires dynamic functionality or you need a feature from Gravity Forms or another form plugin, just link to it. So here we've changed it into a uh, call to action instead. So then that, that, that will take you to a form page where we can load all that stuff. Another little, little reduction, that's all of these are up. So uh, load functionality on demand, don't just load it by default. So some scripts and components can be loaded on demand, saving most users from loading them. Chat widgets are a good example. Uh, complex custom components and third-party embeds are also good targets. So what we're going to do here is first, <coughs> the YouTube embed, it, remember it was loading all the JavaScript uh, without even pressing play. We just instead add a static image. I think this is actually nicer because you can really art direct it. Um, add a play button. And either you, when you press the play button, we can remove the image and replace it with the iframe. Or what we do on, on this website is uh, we, we bring it up. This is very fiddly. Whoa. There we go. Uh, we bring it up. Here we go. So this is the second version. We bring it up as a, as a little light, light box. Um, so we did that. And the second thing we're going to do is load the live chat from a static button. Uh, so basically, instead of I'm using this free chat thing called talk, um, instead of them loading in their whole JavaScript at the beginning, I'm just going to make a little button, make it look the same, very easy, and then when it's clicked, we load in the script, uh, we hide the button, and it looks exactly the same. So this is a major, major big difference, because mainly because of that YouTube stuff. So <coughs> the speed index has gone down a fair amount to 2.6 seconds. Transfer data is down massively, down to 0.56 megabytes. Now we're in, this is good territory. We're, we're in happy, a happy place now. Um, and annual emissions are down to 7.7 .7 kilograms. So something we can do when we're working with a designer maybe is <coughs> ask them to reduce the images in the design. Um, so anything you can do to especially remove full width images. So images that go right to the edge of the screen bad idea, because as soon as you go onto bigger screens, they have to load like maybe a 4,000 pixel image. So anything you can do to just keep images within a sort of bounding box is great. Um, halve them, uh, and maybe just remove unnecessary images. 
So in this example, we've got this big wide image. This was like loading in a 3,000 pixel image on, on my retina screen. And so what I've done here is I've halved it, and then I've added this gradient to make it look like it's <coughs> it hasn't got an edge. Uh, and that's at least halved the, the size of this image. I removed the images from the news articles because they were just stock images. They weren't really that useful. And um, this random thing here, uh, you know, sometimes you can just make things a little bit more typographic, and, and that can be still quite interesting and grab the eye. So, uh, some more wins here. We, we're down to five kilograms. A reduction of 35%. At these lower amounts, it's easy to forget that you're still making quite a big, quite a big impact. Okay, font files. Often you'll see like four or five weights uh, loaded in. Um, so it's good to review whether you really need that extra lightweight. Um, here we've got uh, a lightweight used for absolutely no reason, maybe to prove a point. Uh, and again, the inter font was loading a lightweight as well, and I've removed that. We got rid of 51 kilobytes. Okay, so phase three is like really, really going for it. We're trying to get this down, down a lot now. And first thing is we can just remove all raster images, all pixel images, and replace them with vectors. Um, if they're used for decoration, they can often be replaced with vectors or maybe like a CSS kind of design of some sort. Um, and this is an opportunity to stand out. Way too many websites just rely on kind of like hazy pixel images, and I don't think it looks particularly interesting. So we're going to remove this this image, and we're going to replace it with a little illustration. Um, obviously, this is fairly ubiquitous across the web. This kind of illustration, so maybe you can find something more interesting. Um, and in this one, we're just going to replace it with a vector image. Uh, the badges, they can go. And we're going to replace them with some actually reputable uh, badges. You might notice now that the website is starting to look a bit nicer, a bit fresher. And the word on the street is there's maybe been a change of heart at yuck.com. And they're starting to consider that maybe their approach wasn't the right one. And they're looking at taking the eco stuff seriously now. Right, so we've got uh, another 30% reduction there just from replacing the raster graphics with, with vectors. Obviously, on a normal website, there's probably more pixel images than that, so your, your reduction would be massive. Right, many websites don't require the full power of Google Analytics. There are other options which are easier to install, privacy-friendly, and much, much smaller. Google Analytics is like 17 kilobytes. If you install it with GTM, you're loading 75 kilobytes. Found them another option, and then plausible, which Yoast also showed earlier, is less than one kilobyte. And there are also a few good uh, plugins to do the analytics just within WordPress. Just within WordPress, another great option. Yeah. Uh, so we we use plausible on a lot of websites, and um, it, it's very very easy to install. I also found that there was some random tracking scripts. Uh, some overzealous marketing manager obviously added every tracking script they could. Turns out nobody was looking at the data, so we removed those as well. And now we're down to 1.6 kilograms of annual emissions, 0 0.03 grams of CO2 per page view. Right, system fonts. This is like hardcore mode. Uh, system <laughs> fonts are already installed. Uh, you're going to have a tough time sometimes getting a designer to agree to this. But um, they have no carbon impact. They're already installed on, on the computer. So using system fonts, uh, again, uh, got us down a bunch. And I'll show you the result of that at the end. Uh, dark mode. This isn't something we can measure yet on the website carbon calculator. But in the future, this will be really important. OLED screen technology, each pixel works like a light bulb. So it uses more electricity the more bright it is. So a black screen uses practically no energy. You don't have to use solid black. You can still save a lot of energy just using like a, a solid green or, or, or a darker color. Um, this graph just shows you the, the energy uses, usage of different colors. So as you can see, like even just using like a solid blue at max brightness is a fair reduction. A solid green is a big reduction. So I adapted the, the the color palette for yuck.com 
and we've gone with darker colours with bits of, of white. This is the footer now. And it's time to give yuck.com a rebrand. Um, that, a rebrand they really desperately need. So after some pressure from public health government officials, they have decided to pivot away from rotten food to developing new farming methods, which are super low carbon, and will now be selling fresh food from their eco farms. Aren't we all glad? So this is the, the young.com site. I can show you this on, on here. Oh, no, I've left this up. There we go. Right, so we've got young.com. It's dark. It uses vectors. Uh, we're using uh, the default Mac OS font here. Um, and unfortunately, oh, hang on. This is the website carbon badge. This is something you can add on your sites. And uh, at some point, a result will come up there. And that's just, it's very, very, very low carbon. It's like 0.5, I think it's like 600 bytes or something, I can't remember. Uh, but it's a good way to kind of raise awareness of the issue uh, and show that you're doing a good, do good job. So it's, this is, it says 0 0.02 CO2 per, per view. Oh, last stats. We got down the annual emissions on 60K views. We got down from 186 kilograms to 1.4 kilograms. Um, and page speed performance went up to 99. So this is something you can sell to anyone in your company. Um, the speed indexes both came down. The speed stats both came down for one second. And we have a nice result page on website carbon.com. Uh, we're, we're cleaner than 97% of web pages tested. Thank you very much. You know, just last night I had a, a last call email around midnight. My client screaming that they could not upload some image, and you know they really need a blog post. That image turns out to be like five megabytes. <laughs> and they were screaming. That's small. Yeah, that's small. <laughs> like, so yeah, I'm definitely going to show them. Yes, I guess. Like, look at this. Do we have questions? Yeah. Are you going to be sharing the slides? Yes, so the, oh, I didn't put it on the final slide, but if I go back to slide one, there's a URL on there, which, uh, which actually is, so uh, the, all the steps, I've tagged them on the GitHub repo, and um, all those steps should be, uh, you, can, you, can see them, you can see them all happen, but this is, this is the URL, yeah, yeah. and that's got a link to this presentation as well. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, thank, <laughs> thank you for your talk. Um, when you said gifts, uh, on my website I have around 70, 80, 90 gifts because I'm creating gifts. So I want everybody to download. But uh, do you know maybe some link with, from gifts to go MP4 as you said? Yeah. Um, I cannot find actually. You can't find an easy well, one. Where do you make? How do you make them? Um, uh, with the camera, and then it's like convert this uh, video to uh, a GIF. In I in what? Uh, it, it's uh, it's an online. Okay. Yeah. There will be an option. One hundred. I mean, but what you could do is is just leave it as an as a video, uh, compress the video down. Okay. And then what you need to do is uh, there's a particular way of marking up the video tag so that it plays in line because you don't want it to have a, pre a play button and everything. You want no. it just to play. Yeah, it plays. You know, just people can download. Like we have twenty years ago this kind of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There are ways to do that. You can't do it in things like email, but on the web, mm -hmm. you can make a video. You can remove all the like buttons and everything, and you can have it play automatically. But you just have to be able to change the markup slightly. Um, I can tell you more afterwards. Thank you. Um, one small addition you earlier said um, Photoshop is a good choice. I would say yes and no. Uh, Photoshop definitely can produce really good images but only if you uh, do the right uh, option to save. Yeah. And, uh, especially a lot of uh, graphic uh, guys don't know about this other save option. Yeah, and, so uh, the, the save for web legacy, right? Yeah, uh, it's either save for web legacy or the new other save option. Right. But this standard save as JPEG will cre uh, create yeah. massive JPEGs. But um, instead of 100% in Photoshop, we just put it 80%. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like there are also some fun things you can do with GIF and PNG files. 
you can you can kind of like reduce the color palette, change the dithering options, and you get some kind of odd looking files that they're quite interesting looking, and, and the file sizes can be really tiny on those. Yeah. Just play with those. You you will see the size. Yeah. You, can, you can play with those. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, you said um, SVG uh, files. Uh, you're not sure about uh, coming to core. There is a performance lab plugin, um, and the, there's a performance team in WordPress, and uh, they are um, exploring uh, at the moment uh, if they uh, bring this plugin safe SVG to core. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, not uh, using the sanitizing yeah. option, but uh, looking for script. And if the SVG contains script, then they uh, reject the, the SVG. And if it does not contain uh, any uh, script, then uh, you can upload it. I mean, what good reason is there for an SVG to have a script in it? <laughs> That's just bad news, isn't it? Um, you, can, you could have uh, dynamic uh, things in an SVG. In an SVG? Wow. That's next level SVG. Next le yeah, that's <laughs> level, like next level SVG. Yeah. Okay, I had a question about the YouTube video because I, I find it a, a, a pain, a pain to stop <laughs> to, because users can put just YouTube videos on yeah. their site. So, it, do you have is there a plugin that just th the, does that? So, like, yeah, it's a placeholder image, and when you click, it loads. Uh, I have one. Vip Rocket does it automatically for any YouTube, it replaces it with the thumbnail and not the play button all the box. Rockets, but it does yeah. a lot of other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does a lot of other nice things if you need them. And I have I to admit that at Holgram we currently don't have something in place for that. It's one of the next things I'd like to do. Um, there is something called YouTube-Light, L-I-T-E. I can't remember the name of the developer who made it, but it's great and it basically it grabs the thumbnail image from YouTube, so you don't need to select an image, and then it just packages it up in a really lightweight embed. I, I just wanted to add to the short pixel uh, comment. I use short pixel as well, but I use the SQL item. They have several plugins. Yeah. I use short pixel. Which is the one that generates the files on the server. Yes, and then you have the choice if you keep the original ones or not, and if you, it, it just stays on your own server. So you don't use a CDN. It's just I need to find out about the short pixel uh, renewable yeah, energy. That's exactly. a very good question. But that's an option. If you yeah, know it's, it's outsourcing. It's, it's not. It's not. Yeah, but yeah, outsourcing is. I, I don't see outsourcing as a problem. Like uh, we use Cloudflare on a lot of sites, and we'll outsource yeah. the whole HTML to Cloudflare. Um, that's a lot more efficient than our our servers handling it. So, uh, but but wherever you're outsourcing, you have to be measuring that as well. Yeah. Yes, a problem with the GPR, um, uh, you embed uh, YouTube and uh, if mm -hmm. you use YouTube Live same, yeah. and you uh, get the, 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 the cover image, you have additionally a copyright problem because you are saving the image <laughs> and you are not allowed to do that if this, that's not your uh, video. So right. it, this could be a problem. That's interesting. Um, I recommend uh, embed privacy. Um, it's a tool uh, not loading the, the video, you just click and uh, then YouTube uh, uh, player gets loaded. Mm -hmm. So uh, this will uh, solve the uh, performance problem and solve the GDPR problem. Mm -hmm. Well, by, by the amount of uh, questions, yeah. the conversation we there's have. a lot of knowledge yeah. in the room. Yeah. 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 More questions? I have a question. Uh, you suggested to support uh, as much as possible odd browsers. Support? Support odd browsers, odd, odd yeah. devices. Um, uh, and we know that actually with new uh, browsers, versions, comes always new attributes, new uh, tags, which yeah. actually facilitate things that actually in the past we would have like write a whole script, yeah. like uh, even for example, lazy loading. Uh, yeah, like we have to make a full script. Big performance improvements. Yeah, yeah. So, in so how, how do you actually balance yeah. between choosing all browser I and mean, support all browsers and actually just use the new uh, no, I, features? We have? I totally hear that, and and it's sort of something I'm trying to work out. Where is the balance? Yeah, I think, and maybe this is because of when I started doing development and where we are now. But I I just have a feeling that with ES6 and things like lazy loading and AVIF support, I feel like, and, and flex and grid, I feel like we've reached like a tipping point 
in browser features. And it feels like with evergreen browser support and all of the features I just mentioned and many others like CSS variables, I think it's not unreasonable to draw a line in the sand kind of where we are and say, <coughs> This, is, this, is, this web is, is good enough. There's not so many things we're hacking now. We're not hacking around trying to do things that we were doing before. And, uh, and actually, it's quite efficient. What we have in place is quite efficient. So I think that it's not unreasonable to support from now and, and go forward and try to support as far back as we can now. But I, I agree. I, I don't think we should go back to a day before Flex, Grid, ES6. I, I, I'm not sure it's worth it. Internet is <laughs> and, and the last question from Maria, please. Let's, let's, yeah. Jerome will be here, so you can have like more questions after. Uh, Go ahead. Okay. You said that instead of big images, we should put typography, and it's better. But we have all the time the latest trends put this image, put a lot of images. Nobody's telling that, but you're saying we are, for example, some kind of magazines online to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not all about trends, and it's not anything about trends. If you didn't put this, then it's not trendy, it's not fancy. Mm -hmm. So we don't have online this kind of articles more. So what yeah, should I do yeah. with regard to that? Yeah. And so many trends, 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 images. And typography is now some kind of a trend. But they're not saying because of that, but just yeah. it's maybe it's not going to look like other websites. That's kind of problem online via articles. We should read more about that, which you're mm -hmm. saying. I'll talk to the designers at work and maybe they can make some articles about yeah. how to do uh, yeah. better typographic design. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Good. Good. Well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much.